Okay, we're finally coming back to this thing. I think I have all the pulley spacers for the crank pulley, so let's put that together. And then there are some other issues up here we're gonna have to take care of. So here's the pulley situation. At the bottom is the balancer. Then we have this eighth inch flat disc aluminum spacer. Then we have the crank pulley on top of that spacer so that this belt lines up with everything else, particularly the water pump pulley because we can't move that around too much. Then we have this three quarter inch spacer that sits on top of the crank pulley. Then another eighth inch flat disc aluminum spacer then the supercharger pulley spacer, and then the supercharger pulley. It's quite a thing, huh? Now I've already test fit this, and this length is correct. The supercharger pulley alignment is very, very good. Mainly the concern is in getting everything centered. So in a normal situation, this little lip would be centering this pulley inside of the balancer. It does have these three bolts, and they help to center it, but this is really the main centering technique. That means this isn't going to be seated all the way or at all, in the balancer. A little bit of out of alignment here with V-belts, kind of whatever. A little bit with this thing might be bad, especially at higher boost, which I'm not running, but I'd like to get it as good as possible. Now, the first reason I'm not concerned about it is this. The factory spacer doesn't fit all that tight in this crank pulley anyway. What I will do is use a dial indicator to test the runout, and we'll see what that looks like to see how centered it actually is. But I'm thinking and hoping it'll be okay, because if it isn't, I don't think there's anything I can do about it. And this spacer is machined with really tight tolerances, so these holes fit exactly over the bolt, because there's no center here that anything would uh, locate on. So I think the spacer being at the bottom will also help keep these bolts exactly centered. It's a bit of a crazy, complicated solution for something that you just want to be simple, uh, but I think this is gonna work okay. I still have absolutely no idea why this spacer only comes in a two inch length. It needs to be a full inch longer to fit a normal setup. I have no idea what would account for that much of a difference. So if somebody knows or has an idea, let me know. Okay, let's put all this together again, and I'll bring up the next issue. Once we put all these bolts through and everything is lined up, let's see what the thread engagement looks like. For these outside bolts, we have 0.54 inches, which is perfect as the balancer cross section in this area is only half an inch. So these three bolts are the perfect length. The center one, however, is a concern. This is a standard stock crank pulley bolt. And if we line things up here, we can see that there's a length difference between the stock one and the five inch one that I ordered for this thing. So the difference there is this is about the thread engagement we want and what we would get with a five and a half inch bolt. This is about the thread engagement we have with this five inch bolt. It's just not good enough. This is how much of the bolt is seating in the crankshaft. And this really isn't the kind of connection where you want to screw around with that. We could use the previous owner's strategy and weld an extension in the bolt. I believe this is the stock bolt that he modified, but I really don't want to. There's two reasons. One, this is kind of ruining the heat treatment of the bolt when you get it this hot. And two, as with this one, it's not super centered anymore. What I'm going to do is order yet another bolt. I'm going to order a five and a half inch bolt. But this is good enough to mock things up for today. Let's put this on. Right now, I'm not gonna tighten these down too much. Just gonna get them pretty snug with that half inch ratchet. So this alignment is perfect, really. Let's go ahead and We'll check a couple things by installing the belt. The eyeball alignment checks out, everything looks good, and the V-belt pulley is lined up with the water pump. It is obvious now that the original pulley, or a three-belt pulley, would have worked. So, that's annoying, but I'm gonna keep at it with the plan we developed. So other than a longer bolt there and torquing these, this is pretty much set up. So I can go and, and line up the water pump pulley and the alternator pulley, but before that, let's talk about the intake manifold. So here's where we start having some problems. I noticed this last time 
but didn't mention it and didn't realize the extent of it. You see that crack? It's because the bolt hole, the wall of it was too thin. It was just so thin that when the bolts were torqued down, they cracked. And this one is perhaps the scariest because it almost looks like there's a bit of a crack forming up here too. And if this whole ear comes off, that's gonna be a big water leak right here and a major pain in the ass. Same deal back here. This one's got a little bit of a crack. The rear one's got a crack forming. And back here, this one's got a pretty nasty crack. And this one's got a crack forming. So, holy moly, guys. I found more than one review on these intake manifolds claiming this exact same problem, that there's just not enough material left on the edges of the bolt holes. That's kind of mind blowing with how much these things cost. To be completely fair, mine did look like it was modified, but regardless of who's at fault, this thing is cracked. So the potential problem with those cracks is that the bolts might not be clamping down, or if, if chunks come out, then the bolts won't be clamping down at all, and it'll lift up, and there'll be intake manifold leaks of one kind or another. And buying a new one of these is going to run somewhere in the $700 range. That's intense. So we're gonna run it like this, and whatever happens, happens. But let's talk about another crack. So this has been the source of quite a few headaches here. So this is the EGR plate. You can see the edge of this threaded section is cracked off. I knew that before installing it, and my plan was to just have a bolt and a nut hold it on. What I did not realize until installing it is that that whole thing covers up the hole for the oil pressure sender. Like, completely covers it up. There is no way to get anything installed there. I even bought a mechanical oil pressure gauge and figured that fitting would work. It doesn't, even that fitting is too tall. So the only way to install one without modification would be to find a very low profile 90 degree fitting and install it before the intake manifold. But it's something I should have noticed beforehand. So that's pretty much on me. I really wish they would have noted it in the instruction manual though. So I really thought about the options I had for that. Option one, install that plug, have no oil pressure gauge, and stick that EGR on there with a bolt and nut and hope it sticks. Option two is to pull the intake manifold back off and find some kind of 90 degree fitting somewhere that'll install underneath it and let me use an oil pressure gauge. And if I do that, there won't be space for a bolt and a nut on that back corner. So I'll have to drill and tap a new hole to hold down the EGR plate. If I have to tighten those bolts into those cracked areas again, I might lose chunks of the intake manifold. Hopefully just running this engine over time won't do that on its own, but re-tightening down all those bolts would be asking a lot of this intake manifold. And finally, option three, and this is what we're gonna do, although I still don't feel good about it. I'm gonna take a hacksaw and cut off that back ear of the EGR section on this $700 intake manifold. That way I can drill and tap a hole to keep the EGR block off plate on there nice and tight, and I could either install the stock oil pressure sender, which I would like to do for now, or install the mechanical one in the future. So I'm not looking forward to doing this, but I really just need to do it and get it out of the way. So I'm gonna pull the belt and the blower back off. Okay, now I've got a pretty good angle on this thing. Figure I can get something in there. I might, I might just go right for the Sawzall. Okay, that's hopefully enough. I put in the bolt hole that could go in and kind of marked this out, eyeballed it, and marked for a hole to drill right about there. Okay, this is on there, nice and tight, and the shape is right. So, I think this is ready to go, but let's test out the oil pressure sender fitment now. So 
So I need to take the plug out here. It's close, but that does fit. So I can use the oil pressure sender just as I had it before. And then in the future, I'll install the mechanical gauge. So the oil pressure sender situation should not be a problem for at least right now. I'm gonna put the plug back in it and just kind of sand down the back of the manifold so it's nice and smooth. Gave the EGR plate a quick coat of paint and I cut down the old gasket to the right size and punched a new hole in it for the new bolt location. And I'm just gonna reuse that one. If it leaks, I'll replace it, but I think it'll be okay. Everything is clean, so we're ready to install it. I put just a touch of anti-seize on these bolts for a little bit of insurance. And I don't know the torque for these, but we'll just go ahead and make a guess of 15 foot-pounds. Okay, so that's the EGR plate installed. Let's get the oil pressure sender on there. Okay, I think that'll do. And then we'll move on to something else.